Okay, let's talk about student loans. John Burns Research and Consulting. Um, you probably know, um, you know, the Biden administration passed, you know, basically an unconstitutional executive order for um, got to basically forgive a bunch of um, government student loans. Supreme Court said you can't do that. Um, not surprising. It's a happy turn of events for student borrowers who love the idea of paying back. <laughs> If you love paying back loans, then you were you were yeah. Well, the, yeah. There's no you know what's what's going on in 2024. There's not like a there's not like a political event that's happening. Yeah, they got in, plenty of time in, no, in November to do something to do something else. You can't get like you got to get it to a certain demographic. Um. Any anyway, but so this is, you know, in an ideal world, mm -hmm. borrowers would have been you know pocketing and escrowing that money because it's not for sure. Yep. And I don't think any of that happened. No, these are kids. Even, you know, even 35. I was going to say they're kids, but I mean, like, a lot of them are, yeah. I mean, I guess if, I mean, they're 30s. Yeah, I'm one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll tell you. Matt, we're like, we're, way, we're closer to 40 than 30, yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like No, but uh, uh, I, I do agree. And I, you know, I was one of, one of these, these borrowers and, um, you know, I'm, I'm still on like this income-based repayment plan. And, and so it's not, it, it wasn't that. Huge. I think that that some of the some borrowers are it, it's going to hit them a lot, some a little. I yeah. Think some of some borrowers have not availed themselves of all the uh, payment plans and opportunities that are offered to them. So, so uh, t tell me a little more about that, man. I mean, so like, what? Not you don't have to get like too deep, deep, deep plan. into your in, your situation. Yeah, but what are the payment options? plan? They you you sign up. I think that the uh, lenders make it hard. <laughs> yeah, they don't want you on it. They want you to pay as much as they can. Um, but you go and and you pay a percentage of your income and they calculate, you know, how your disposable income and how based on like tax filings and it takes out that percent. And as far as I know, you keep paying that for 20 years and they will that then the loan will go off the books. Um, oh, and, just what you pay like this is what I can pay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, if you make a if you make, and that's already available. Yeah, it's already available. If you make 20 grand a year, you go on the income based repayment plan. There's a good chance that you're not going to pay anything at all, mm -hmm. depending on what your you know, what your loan is and what your situation is. Um, I think, you know, it's, it, it, that's, that's a lot to say a little, that's giving short shrift to the people that are really paying a lot because ultimately when John Burns crunched the numbers, he's saying that the average loan payer is paying $400. Now there's a Moody's article that I'm pairing this with that I think that people should also, um, read they, their numbers closer to 275 mm -hmm. uh, a month that they're paying, but still that's a lot of money. Um, it, it, it just, just to add every month, you know. Where's that money going? Where would that have gone anyways? Um, a huge chunk. And now this is what I was talking about, Spencer. It's like, how much did this drive inflation, student loans? How much did this drive rent growth? Because if rent is the, the kind of the biggest payment that people are making and they suddenly have $400 more a month, well, they can get $400 more of an apartment. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, that, again, yeah, I don't think they were saving it. And so, you know, did they, and it would be, a, it would have been a bad, um, they couldn't have, I'm trying to think like those debts, like when they qualify, mm -hmm. when they, when they qualify, like that would still show up, I would assume in their like income qualification or. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Um, but I actually I don't think so. But I one one really uh, important data point here now, and I had to go elsewhere with this yeah. was the education data initiative has some data on um, on the age of borrowers, like, well, a lot of demographics on, you know, kind of how much each what these borrowers are like and 34 percent of the 18 to 29 age group has student loan debt 22 percent of the 30 to 44 age group seven for 45 to 59 one percent for 16 over so the younger demographics those that are most and more likely to rent are those with the most student loans which really isn't a surprise yeah. um f the total 43.6 million have federal student debt now that bumps it up a little closer to uh, it's a little higher if you're including private loans, but um, essentially, you know, the average federal loan, uh, student loan debt balance is thirty-seven thousand. There's a lot of people, um, a lot of people in in the right age groups to rent are um, are are being impacted. Now, it, what's interesting in, in this, and John Burns is uh, is housing largely, and it does lightly talk about potential impacts on the multifamily market, but really, it's focused on the kind of inflationary and broader economic impacts. Yeah, However, I just did some like really quick math. You can just so like a four forty three point six million borrowers, you know, so if I was on average, you know, I took a two hundred dollar like, you know, 
payment yeah. and not the 400, mm-hmm. just like 200, it's $8.7 billion a month in economic. You know, so if they were spending that money, so true. not saving it, which you know the mass majority were just spending it, they're not yeah. saving it. It's between eight and 16, depending on you know how you want to pick it, eight to $16 billion of econ- economic activity every single month. And now it's going to have to be go- going to pay down um, loans. Yeah. I, I don't know if paying down loans, I don't think that's really going to be generating any economic activity. It's not like the federal yeah, government is getting that and reinvesting it. I don't. Yeah. It's, and, and it's so hard. It gets like muddy and, and kind of diffuse if you're if you're thinking about like the benefit of the paying loan. Someone's got to benefit. I'm not arguing that they should be forgiven, you know, because yeah, yeah. again. Oh, I am. I think forgive all loans all the time. Yeah. Let's have a jubilee. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that would be the nice thing to do. And there's, yeah, yeah you can make an argument, but it, the argument is inflationary. So it's yeah, like you yeah. do this and then like everyone's purchasing power goes mm-hmm. down. And then again, the moral reasons that to not do it is, you know, Matt, you are a PhD, you know, that who has a job. Yeah. You, why should your student loans be forgiven mm-hmm. versus, you know, this is like, this is like the, the narrative or this is the, the talking point. Yeah. But if I went to a trade school to be a plumber or whatever, or electrician, and I took on a lot of debt to go to trade school. Mm-hmm. I'm, my loan's not forgiven. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to work, and I'm. And what about to, the guy that already paid his loans off? What if the guy who already paid his loan off? He was responsible. But one thing that Matt, we continuously continue, we continue to learn is that our economy consistently uh, accommodates those who make the. That's true. Biggest mistakes and errors and mess up the most. That's true. Where's the Federal Reserve guidelines for workouts for student loans? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like you you took on way too much debt. You over yeah. on some office building. Well, you if know you the worst the worse the, the the more risk you took on, the bigger break we're going to give yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And you know it, it's just it's absolute moral fa- failing, yeah. um, and create creates a moral hazard in a huge in a huge way of saying. It's okay to take on debt and take risks mm-hmm. because we're going to bail you out. Yeah. And the, that's we the economy is not going to function. Markets aren't going to function yeah. if we have that type of, of well, system. Even though it yeah. seems nice to have like you know a bunch of safety blankets or I don't know a crawl and harness. Yeah, which I, is great. I think that there's a there's something. Also, I'll just say lame about student loans and giving kids these loans without really you don't really know even you know even in grad school it was a far off thing it wasn't it's not like a product or a car or think this is your education it's always assumed that it is an inherent good and you're not really equipped at that especially when i was at when i was going to grad school yeah go get more education yeah. it's who's, more, you. who's more you know who is preying more on american youth in society is it the payday lenders or is it sally may yeah I mean, really, if you look at the effect, is it the payday lenders who are, yeah, charging a stupid interest because, you know, you're getting advance on your paycheck? Or is it the group that's sponsored and run by the federal government that is influencing kids to take on massive amounts of debt that, that they, they, they can't get out can't of? can't get out of. You could never. You can't declare bankruptcy and get and get out of a student loan debt. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that they'll pass laws that'll make sure that it's transferred to your next of kin. Yeah, <laughs> if you tell. Yeah. So yeah, and so it, it it's yeah, it's un it's unfortunate. It's it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It, but I don't think that anyone was really a, like. It seems so far fetched when they even announced it. They were like forgetting people. So. Well, I mean, Biden himself was yeah. like, "Yeah, they'll probably won't let us do it." I forget what he said, but he's like, "It's most likely unconstitutional." Yeah, and they're like, "Correct." It didn't kind of go to this Moody's analytics um, article, it, they do really put um, put a, a very fine point on it, uh, a little bit more specifically than the John Burns and connect it to the housing market and to um, really, I think, to the multifamily market. And they said, um, and I just want to read this whole paragraph. Um, In a recent study by Moody's analytics chief, Mark Eco- uh, chief economist Mark Z- Zandi and his team, as many as 5 million student loan borrowers were need to resume making payments close to 275 per month on average, amounting to nearly 0.25% of GDP under the assumption that total household income does not change by the end of student loan moratorium and the percentage of total income needed to pay rent stays the same, the monthly reductions from resuming student loan payments will slash any financial buffers, forcing households to cut back on discretionary spending, face difficult household decisions such as trading down or even having to share a unit with friends. And on average, a median income household spends about 30% renting 
So for places with large, where large rent disparities exist between class A, class B, and C, taking 275 out of that monthly budget may force families to trade down. So trading down, that's one. Getting roommates, maybe instead of getting an apartment by yeah. yourself, really maybe even staying put instead of deciding to move up. Maybe you had a bump in income, but because of that 275 or however much you're now paying, maybe it's a thousand. Now you can't move up because you're just uh, limited. I, uh, there are all these scenarios that could drive down apartment demand. I don't think that this is going to be offset because the point of John Burns' article was this is going to maintain the renting population. People, this will exacerbate the barriers to owning a home. I don't think that that is enough to counteract at least the temporary effect that's going to have of people yeah. getting all that money cut off. Yeah, I, I think it's a long term, short term. Yeah. And um, again, it, it, it's so frustrating what you know the administration did to folks you know in this 18 to 29, but that's a large percentage, you know, 18 to 29 year olds. That's the voting block that they want to win over, that they want to have turn out at the polls. Yeah. And this was all about just getting that demographic group, you know, excited to show up, you know, in November of 2024. I don't believe that. You don't believe you don't believe <laughs> that. Kidding, that guys, well, I mean, it, it's fine. They may, I'm sure they it's it's they thought I was good, but they knew oh, it's totally they knew that yes. it probably wouldn't work. They admitted that and they knew that it was going to be part blocked. of his campaign promise. And so in and, and, and all of the commentary from left and right are like, he kind of has to do this. You have to do it. Well, yeah, he. Yeah, but he could have done it through Congress. Yeah. yeah. And they, they controlled like both houses of sure. Congress. So. It, it was is it, disingenuous. Like, I, yeah, I believe that they wanted it to probably happen, but they knew it wouldn't happen the way that they did it. But yeah. what it did is it gave all these 18 to 29 year olds who are incredibly irresponsible. They were like, I've got 200 to $400 extra a month in my mm -hmm. pocket. I'm going to go either burn or whatever. Or it all happened at the same time where rents were increasing an incredible amount. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're like, sure. Okay. I think I can't afford it because I think I've got an extra two to $400 mm -hmm. because, you know, the student debt sucks and, you know, it's going to get canceled. I heard, I thought I'd already, I mean, they don't, they're, it's, it's, they're not nuanced enough. Yeah. I don't make our generalizations. There's a lot of smart folks in Gen Z that say they're more nuanced than we are, Matt. Um, they think that they're in the clear and then all of a sudden they're going to be like, nope, sorry, you don't have that income. It, it, yeah. It's ours. And now they're in a position where they're paying rent where maybe they can't afford it. Mm hmm. And then, you know, it's, whether it's collections issues, delinquency, bad credit, an eviction on the record, it, it set up a lot of their youth to fail. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty frustrating. Yeah. They're going to have to make adjustments that they could have made. They could have been living in that B class apartment. It could have been fine if they're like, I know my budget. I have, I have this obligation and I need yep. to work within my means. They had a false sense of what their liabilities were. They thought a liability had been taken off the, the, their books. Yeah. It, and, and I, you know, going back to multifamily, I'm still thinking, so we had this population where they were very amenable to, to the consistently raising rents. There was no hard ceiling. There was no any kind of negative feedback, uh, when, when rents were raised. And now, you know, we're going, we may see the opposite effect. And I wonder, you know, if they're saving money or not having to spend money that doesn't have as much of a, uh, impact uh, psychologically as suddenly having to spend money. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. it's not like they gave you $400 a month. Yeah. They just didn't take it. Yeah. And now that they are starting to take it, you're going to notice that, um, I think. And that's, that's point, and huh? that may affect decisions a little bit more, but that's just a... Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, it reminded me of the, of the stimulus checks a little bit. I don't know what the, you know, it's not the, a good direct correlation. But yeah, yeah. Stimulus check. Yeah, exactly. Like that, that problem, that was, that was a bigger psychological and that's what people were talking about. Mm -hmm. They weren't necessarily really talking too much, but I mean, they were, um, but it wasn't that heavy in mental image as you know, free money. Yeah. Yeah. Free I agree. Funds.